What is going on, Tendon Crew? My name is Billy the Squid, and welcome to episode one of the Ultimate Guide to Armored Core S ranking every mission in the game, starting with chapter one. Today, we will be going through all of the chapter one missions, and I will be explaining to you exactly how to get those juicy S ranks on each and every one of them, from loadouts to strategies. Everything will be covered in this guide. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All of these S rank runs were completed fairly early into the game, just after beating chapter two. So if you want to do these strats exactly like I'm doing them, you need to be at least that far. But the biggest takeaway that you're actually going to need is at least getting the different leg styles, specifically the quad legs, as they are the most useful for some of these missions. S ranks and armored core come from four different components. The health that you lose, the ammo that you use, the speed that you do the mission, and in some cases, the amount of bonus objectives that you get done during that mission. Each mission seems to have its different weight that it leans to one way or the other when it comes to one of these stats. So I will be explaining exactly which stat is the most important per mission as we get into it. Also, if you're interested in seeing all of these missions S ranked without the commentary over top of them or them being cut up, I will be uploading the full chapter one S rank video later in the week. So be on the lookout for that. So let's get into it with chapter one, mission one, illegal entry. This mission is heavily weighted towards the health that you have left at the end, as well as the speed that you get it done, primarily the speed. So going through and fighting as few enemies as possible is going to be the name of the game for this mission. For reference, I finished this mission in about 5 minutes and 45 seconds, and the stats on the screen show my repair cost and ammo costs at the end. This is a good place to mention that when I say health left over, I am not meaning the health packs that you use or anything like that. Health packs actually have no factor on the health stat when it comes to S ranking these missions. It is specifically the amount of damage that you specifically take and the repair cost at the end of the mission that matters. Both using health packs and using resupplies does not factor to this number. But back to illegal entry, this is the only mission in the game that does not give you a choice in AC to take into it. You have to use the starter AC, but luckily this AC has everything you need to get the job done very quickly and efficiently. Mainly because you don't really need to fight much of anything throughout this mission. It is mainly just getting the licenses as quick as possible and then beating the boss efficiently. I recommend getting the licenses from a left to right sweep throughout the city as this will be the most efficient route to you since the left one is the closest to you from spawn. When you get close to the leftmost license, assault boost in and whenever you start your scan there is a little trench that you can actually sit yourself into and you don't actually have to engage with the mechs that come after you. As soon as you see the scan complete, go ahead and assault boost out and head over towards the middle one in the city. Take time to let the assault helicopter clear out the mechs for you and then you can just walk up and scan this mech for free. The last one is the only one where you'll actually have to fight things, and I would prioritize the larger mechs first, as while you're scanning, you can pick off any of the small helicopters that come at you to harass you. They won't do enough damage to actually affect your S ranking, but still try to take as little damage as possible here, specifically from the large mechs. They can mess up this mission if they hit you too many times. Once this scan goes through, go ahead and head up the dam and get ready for the boss fight. After scanning this last licensure, the assault helicopter comes in and you have to complete this boss fight fairly quickly and with minimal damage taken. The key takeaway for this fight is to prioritize hitting it with your plasma blade as much as possible. This helicopter has a funny habit of going out of bounds so that you cannot hit it, but if you back off a little bit, it tends to fly itself back into bounds. Prioritize using your missiles and your assault rifle on cooldown and staying underneath of the assault helicopter will keep you in the safest position while also being able to assault boost up and use your plasma blade on cooldown as well. With some good RNG and ruthless aggression, mission one is S ranked. Congratulations. Moving on to mission two, destroy artillery installations. This mission also prioritizes the speed that you complete the mission as well as the health you have remaining. There is the extra bonus for destroying other enemies in the mission, but that is not the big factor when it comes to S rank. So prioritize only the artillery when you're going through this. To give you all some point of reference, my run was completed in about two minutes and 10 seconds with the stats that you are seeing on the screen now. My recommendation is anything that will give you the most amount of hover and aerial maneuverability. Me specifically, I used a quad tank with two heavy cannons to one tap each one of the artillery as I got near them. You could also take in a speed mech with a strong close range weapon if that is more your preferred playstyle. But do keep in mind that being that close to things will make it so that you're more likely to take damage. So play to your strengths and do whatever is going to get the job done best. From the start, if you go forward and to the right, there will be the first artillery encampment. The reason I chose the quad mech is because you can actually assault boost up into the air and then hover directly over top of each one of these encampments. 
The artillery is shielded from the front, but it is not shielded from above or from the back or sides. Being above them is an easy way just to be able to simply fly over top and one tap each and every one of them. It's super easy to get distracted by all of the fodder on the ground, but just make sure you are prioritizing the enemies that specifically have the target above them, as those are the ones that you need to take out. Nothing else really factors into S-ranking this. Also keep in mind that if you are using the hover strat that I use, most of the mechs in this mission are not accurate enough to actually hit you from that height, so you don't need to worry about dodging that much. As long as you keep coasting and strafing while hovering, you should be safe. And before you know it, this mission is complete, and you have one of the quickest S ranks in Chapter 1. Mission 3 up next, Grid 135 Cleanup, and this is the first mission where your ammo usage actually factors into it. It is a healthy balance between health, speed, and ammo usage in this. Mission 3 took me about 2 minutes on the dot to complete, with the repair costs that you're seeing on the screen, and the ammo cost sitting just under 11,000 credits. I again used my hover mech, mainly using the auto-targeting rockets on the back, but a mech that uses lower cost ammunition can get the job done effectively as well. But using the strat that I did, I had to make sure that every single missile hit its mark exactly how I needed it to. The reason I took the hover mech again is because you can have aerial superiority and float through the area, cleaning out enemies one by one simply as you fly past. For specific weaponry, if you're going to go for the strat that I did, you want to make sure that the shoulder cannons that you have have as much auto-locking capability as possible. My left cannon has 10 missiles for auto-lock. My right one has three. As for my hand cannons, I wanted to make sure I had something to be able to punch through shields that the ground mechs tend to have, so I used one of the heavier missile options. My recommendation for clearing this mission is to go in a clockwise formation, left, forward, right, and backwards, as this will make it so that you have the most time-efficient route getting through, and you will be circling back towards the main entrance when the reinforcements arrive. Use your multi-lock systems to clear out the helicopters and your hand cannons to clear out any of the shielded mechs on the ground, and this mission should not take you too long whatsoever. Congratulations. Mission 4, Destroy the Transport Helicopters, will most likely be the first mission that actually gives you a hang-up when it comes to getting the S rank. This is simply because it actually factors in the extra reward into getting the S rank. The main mission is to destroy the giant transport helicopters, and you would think, similar to the artillery installations, if you just prioritize them and get the mission done as quickly as possible, you would be good to go. Unfortunately, in this case, you are wrong. You need to definitely destroy those as quick as possible, but at each one of the encampments, you need to prioritize two to three of the mechs on the ground to make sure that you get enough of the cash reward for the extra mission requirement to give you the S rank. I wish that these games told you what exactly is being factored into these missions, but this is the first mission that the extra reward is actually factored in. And since the game won't tell you, I will. I completed this mission in a minute and 15 seconds, destroying six of the ground mechs, the one artillery encampment on top of the uh, building going towards the second transport helicopter with these stats that you are seeing on the screen now. As far as an ideal build goes, I took a mech that was built for speed with a shotgun equipped and shoulder mounted rockets that were able to one shot each of the transport helicopters as I fired them at them. The shotgun is good for one tapping each of the small mechs on the ground, making it so that you can quickly and efficiently bounce from encampment to encampment, getting the job done. And that is the overall strat for this mission. Bounce from encampment to encampment, use your shoulder mounts to shoot down the transport helicopters, and then run and gun with the shotgun to pick off one or two smaller mechs as you go. Once you get to the final encampment, prioritize destroying the last four of the transport helicopters, and then while the outro commentary is going on, you can pick off one, two, or three of the additional mechs that are around there. I highly recommend ignoring and avoiding the quad mech that's up there, as destroying it does not factor towards the S rank and will most likely make you take unreasonable amounts of damage. And just like that, another S rank for the collection. And next up we have Mission 5, Destroy the Tester AC. This mission is simply a 1v1, so take whatever your dueling build is into this to get this done as quickly as possible. This mission took me about 50 seconds total to finish up. This mission highly prioritizes ammo consumption as well, so I recommend taking a melee weapon to cut down on those ammo costs. For me specifically, I took a speed mech with the plasma blade, a shotgun, and dual mounted rockets on each shoulder. 
as soon as you load in Zerg Rush this man, as he is just a trainee rookie pilot and should not give you too much issue if you've played further into the game. He is unaware at the start of the fight, staring at the last transport helicopter on Rubicon after the last mission, so he should be able to take easy advantage of at the beginning. Lead up with your melee strike and then lean full into whatever primary weapon you brought. After two cycles of stagger, you should have this man down and an easy S rank to boot. Mission 6 brings us to my favorite mission from Chapter 1, Attack the Dam Complex. This mission is a long, drawn-out assault on the dam, and you actually have two buddies to go along with you. That being said, you do still need to have a quick pace to you with this, and above all else, you need to prioritize your ammo consumption, as you will have to destroy most of the enemies that come across in this mission, so high artillery, expensive ammo is going to make it very difficult to get an S rank. My S rank run finished in 3 minutes and 25 seconds, with the stats on the screen taking into special consideration that 11,000 ammo cost. Once again, I took a speed mech with a shotgun and a melee weapon just to cut down on the ammo costs. You should be able to confidently let your allies take care of these smaller mechs while you prioritize the larger mechs with your shotgun or your melee weapons. At the first two generators, make sure you clear out each and every one of the enemies there, or else you have to backtrack and it will kill your time. Liberal use of your melee weapon is going to be key to keeping that ammo cost low, so don't hesitate to get directly into the fray. Also using your melee on the generators themselves is probably a good idea, because there's no reason wasting ammo on something that can't fight back. Fly up the river and continue this trend at the third generator, killing everything in your way that you see, and then get ready for your duel on the lake. A 3v1 isn't exactly fair, and this should be a fairly quick and dirty battle. Before you start the boss fight itself, I would pick off the ground forces, prioritizing the rocket launcher up at the top of the mech, and then the ground forces that come down along with the boss. This mission does seem to require you to destroy this mech to get the S rank, as rushing the last generator at the top of the dam will leave you just short. But as soon as that mech is down, jet up to the top of the dam, destroy the last generator, and earn your S rank reward. Mission 7 sends us sending the Strider to Heaven. Destroy the weaponized mining ship, one of the longest missions that you will have in Chapter 1. Vertical boosting and hovering is going to be key to this mission, so bring whichever mech does that job the best. For me, it is my quad. For your stat rundown, I completed this mission in 5 minutes and 5 seconds, and while that might seem like a slow time, this is a long mission, so don't neglect your speed when going through here. Secondarily, you definitely want to make sure that your health stays up. There's a lot of things in this mission that can ship you down very quickly, so keep an eye on that stat as well. As far as loadout goes, I brought heavy assault gear, missiles, and rocket launchers to boot. That way I could one-tap each one of the generators on the Strider, as well as quickly staggering the eye once the boss fight started. From the beginning of the mission, you want to assault boost forward and try to cover as much ground as possible. There's only a limited amount of time once the crew on the ship starts talking, and you will get a nice little symbol showing that the eye is firing up and ready to laser. Anytime that I've tried to last minute dodge this laser, it has always been met with a big chunk of damage. But my recommendation is if you assault boost at an angle, the laser should just slip right past you. Once the sandstorm's out of the way, what you want to do is find the backmost leg and prioritize firing all of your armaments into it as quickly as possible. There's only one ground mech on the ground at this point, and you should be able to maneuver around quickly enough so that it is not a threat, but go ahead and take it out if it's annoying you. Once the leg goes down, the climb begins. There will be a certain moment where you can kind of recognize that the back of the strider has become a platform, and that's when you should start assault boosting up onto the back of the mech. Use this back piece to refill your energy supplies and then assault boost back up onto the next platform. I recommend avoiding and ignoring all of the smaller armaments that are on the side of the strider as they don't do that much damage and as if you're assault boosting past them there's no way they're going to hit you. The quickest route for taking out the generators should be as follows. Take out the rightmost one followed by the one underneath then the leftmost one and then assault boost up to the top to finish off the one on top. This will get you in prime position to jet directly over to the eye and begin the boss fight as quickly as possible. Once the boss fight starts, directly unload all of your armaments into the center of the eye, with the biggest threat here not actually being the eye's laser itself, but the missiles that it shoots off to the side. The lasers tend to be a big distraction from these missiles, but I found that they do the most damage and will stagger you, making the eye effectively do more damage on top of it. 
you get hit by these lasers and get staggered, I would recommend restarting as that will most likely reduce your health to the point that you're not going to be able to get the S-Rang. On top of this, it's worth noting that the energy pulse that the eye does is proximity based. And if you're keeping about a mid range distance away from it, you should not have to worry about this attack specifically. As soon as that health bar goes down, head off to the right and jet as far away as possible. And at that point, it's just a waiting game for you to be able to see your glorious S rank. Congratulations. Next up is Mission 8, Operation Wall Climber. And while this might be one of the more intimidating missions whenever you first play through it, once you know the strats, this is actually one of the easier S ranks to get. Operation Wall Climber took me about 4 minutes and 45 seconds to complete with the stats that you are seeing on the screen right now. As far as a loadout goes, the biggest thing that you want to take into consideration is boss fighting potential. There is a mid boss as well as a final boss for this mission, and you want the best mech to take care of both of these threats as quickly and without as much damage as possible. For me, this was my light assault mech with two shotguns in each hand and shoulder mounted cannons on both shoulders. Once you load into the map, the first thing you want to do is assault boost off to the left. If you skirt this left edge of the map, the artillery up on the wall will not be able to hit you as easily, specifically the giant cannon at the very top. While the mission wants you to take out the artillery cannons at the start of the mission first, you actually want to skirt around and take out the quad mech first. This will make it so that as you approach those artilleries from behind, you have little to no resistance and can easily walk up, one tap them, and then head back into the building. I personally find this mech more of a threat than the final boss of the mission, so if you take too much damage here, I would recommend restarting, as it's at the beginning of the mission, you're getting it out of the way first thing, and you're not losing that much time on it. Hopefully with the twin shotguns and artillery armament, you're able to stagger this man quickly and efficiently, and finish this fight off before too much damage is taken. Once that's done, quickly run up and blast out the artillery, and then backtrack back up the wall and through the doors. Once inside, you can pretty much avoid everyone. Just assault boost past everybody. The door should open for you while the mechs are coming in and you can just skirt directly past them and get to the elevators as quickly as possible. Once at the top of the elevators, take the resupply. I mentioned it at the beginning of the video, but I'm going to reiterate it here. Taking these resupplies does not affect your S rank totals. It is only the damage that you take specifically and the ammo that you use specifically. So getting a resupply has zero factor on this. Once the boss fight begins, it really is as simple as getting behind the mech and shooting both shotguns into it in tandem. Use your rockets on cooldown to also help stagger, but this is the prime way you're going to be able to take this boss down. It should be staggered more often than not during this boss fight if you're doing things properly. And the stagger will also be good enough to cancel it out from running away from you as this boss tends to like to do. The biggest threat that this boss poses is when your partner goes away in phase two. It does this thing where it spins around and drops a bunch of landmines on the ground. If you're not paying attention to where these landmines are, it is easy to rack up a large amount of damage or outright die. And it is worth mentioning that doing a reset at checkpoint will void your S rank for the mission. But if you took a lighter mech or something that has good aerial maneuverability, you should not need to worry about this attack as it is effectively the only attack that can hit you. If it does happen to get away from you, I recommend assault boosting forward, leaning towards the right side as most of the time the guns shoot from the left of the mech. Wash, rinse, repeat, and keep the stagger going, and the S rank will surely be yours. Next up, we have Mission 9, Retrieve the Combat Logs. This mission is fairly simple, but it does have an extra twist in the fact that you need to find all eight of the combat logs. As well as getting all of those combat logs, you also need to be able to destroy the AC that attacks you in the middle of the mission. Once you grab all the combat logs, the mission will end, and my mission time for this mission was 3 minutes and 36 seconds for the S rank, with the stats that you are seeing on the screen now. Again, I am taking my light assault mech with the twin shotguns, for one, to be able to traverse the area quickly, and for two, to be able to take out the AC as quickly and efficiently as possible. Start off by grabbing the two combat logs in the city, taking out any mechs that just happen to be annoying you while you're scanning. A quick reminder that you do not need to destroy a certain amount of mechs throughout this mission. The only one that matters is the AC at the end. Once you get those two mechs done, quickly skirt along the rightmost wall, take out the mech up on the top of the hills, and then go down to 
to the third combat log. Also, I'll boosting forward to the next plume of smoke. I use my artillery to take out these three mechs that are standing there as there's not much cover to be able to get this scan off properly. From there, bounce over to the large mech and give it a scan. You can actually use it for cover while the scan's going off and you don't have to take out any of the mechs that come at you from there. As soon as that scan goes through, go off to the left and down into the hole and there will be a mech down at the bottom that you can see. If you get down to this one quickly enough and scan it, the rocket mech up on the sides won't be able to fire off on you. Going underneath the debris, this is where the AC is going to come and attack you. I would not recommend scanning this until after you have gotten the fight completed. Using the twin shotguns and your artillery on cooldown, this should not be a difficult fight, but it is worth noting that she uses typically high-powered rockets, so staying up off the ground to keep you out of the explosions is recommended. Once she has been defeated, scan your last combat log. And then the final one is a hidden one. If you head up past the wreckage of the engine on the back end of this area, you should be able to skirt all the way up the wall and find the hidden combat log. There will be a few mechs nearby. Go ahead and take them out before you scan it. And at that point, this mission is done and an S rank is all yours. Mission 10, Investigate Ballast Arsenal number 2, is the most difficult mission to S rank in Chapter 1. There is very small windows for error in this, as the time requirement is so fine that if you make one mistake, you're better off restarting the whole mission. This is also the only mission where I recommend you take my exact loadout to a T. You can have any light mech that you want, but you definitely want the Songbird missiles on your shoulders and shotguns in your hands. On top of this, you're also going to be wanting to take the OS ships that make your door opening faster and the Assault Armor Extension to help you negate a Pulse Shield later in the level. As for what that specific time is, I finished this mission in 3 minutes and 24 seconds, and I believe if you do it any slower than 3 minutes and 30 seconds, you will not get your S rank. This is also factoring in that you can only take a very small amount of damage throughout this entire mission, and the ammo count that you need needs to be extremely fine-tuned. I am also going to let this mission play out in full and give you a full play-by-play -play as it is that specific as what you need to do. First off, you need to assault boost on this corner and quickly skirt around it. Sparing no time, assault boost back down and jump on top of this building. You will start getting sniped at by the first invisible mech. Use this landing to get enough boost to jump over to them and immediately hit them with the songbird and then one tap them with a shotgun. Going over, wait for Handler Walter to finish his comms and as soon as you see the red bar start to fade, assault boost forward. The building ahead of you will have another invisible sniper mech on top of it. Use this ground to dodge those snipes and on the second blast jump up to it and then hit it with a songbird and one tap it with the shotguns again. On the ground there's going to be a third mech that you can't see. If you rush over to it quickly enough you can actually get a songbird shot off before it spawns. I was not lucky enough to do that this time. Luckily the twin shotguns are a good backup strategy and you can stagger him quickly and then one tap him from there. Assault boosting up over top of this. There will be an invisible mech that you do not know is there, but you can songbird it before it even spawns and then hit it with a shotgun to quickly finish it off. Going over to the right, there's another one on top of this building. Once you take out the first one, it will immediately start shooting at you, but you can get over to it quickly and then take it out, followed up by the third one on the ground. Getting a songbird shot off, even if it's one missile, will be enough for the shotguns to stagger it from there, and then you should be able to finish it off quickly. It is also worth noting I would go and get your operating chips so that you can scan doors quicker as those few seconds that you take to open the door could mean the difference between an A and an S rank. Allow yourself to free fall down into the pit as it will be the quickest way to get down and then go and stand in the middle. If you stand in the middle of the area towards the back of the back dishes, a melee mech will spawn on top of you with a pulse shield. I recommend having the pulse burst extension so that as soon as it spawns you jet over to it and use this move. This should make it so that one more songbird tap will break the shield and then you can stagger them with the shotguns and then after that all you have left are the ones on the walls. 
it wasn't until this mission that I realized that you can actually get a gauge on where enemies are by the HUD at the bottom of the screen. And this is the best way to figure out where they're at without having to wait for them to shoot at you. Just look for where these red squares are at and then jet over towards them. They will give away their specifics as soon as they start firing, but I highly recommend going about it this way, especially considering that they can go invisible and move to a complete opposite side of the arena at any moment. With this mission, if you run up to one of these guys and do not hit them with the songbird immediately, following them up with a one-tap and they end up disappearing, you will not have enough time to finish this mission and find them again. So I highly recommend it before you get too close to them and it causes them to flee, hit them with the songbird, and then as you are both free following hit them with the shotguns with some good rng and some well-timed shots you should be able to get this s rank and good luck because you're gonna need it and last but not least we have mission 11 of chapter one attack the watch point this is the final mission of chapter one and ends in the baltius boss fight the best thing about this mission and getting an s rank on it is that your health and your ammo consumption barely matter on these missions where it has like the main bosses of the chapter, typically just getting them done quickly is the quickest way to S rank. And as I will show you here, my time was about five minutes and 14 seconds. And the amount of damage that I took in the ammo cost that I put out was not the smallest that I have seen. So you can actually get away with taking quite a bit of punishment. As long as you don't die and have to restart at checkpoint, you will probably be able to get an S rank fairly easily especially if you use the loadout that I did, which is the infamous double Zimmerman build. You're also going to want to have the assault armor pulse blast just so you can knock off Baltius' shield as quickly as possible. The first two sections of this mission are mob clearing sections. The first area having three laser cannon turrets that you need to take out and also all of these smaller laser mechs around the watch point. You do need to go around and destroy each and every one of them. This isn't just destroy the encampment to be able to proceed into the next area. And if you're having trouble finding those last few mechs and they're not shooting at you because maybe they're behind a wall or something, don't forget that HUD at the bottom will kind of give you a generalized idea of where they are so that you can pinpoint them a little bit easier. But if you start on the left side and then kind of work yourself clockwise around, you should be able to find most of them fairly easily and as soon as handler walter starts talking you are ready to move on to the next section and the next section is more of the same i would assault boost to the far side of the map and go ahead and shoot out that first laser cannon and then kind of skirt around that wall to the second one taking out the laser mech up at the top as you get close and as you can see, I am taking a significant amount of damage, and it just goes to show that damage really isn't the biggest factor when it comes to this mission. It is just doing it as quickly as you can. Again, once Walter starts talking, the checkpoint will update, and you will get to the mini-boss of this chapter, Sula. As far as this mini boss goes, as soon as it jumps down, you want to fire off your assault armor to get a decent amount of stagger off and then immediately pump two rounds of the shotgun in. And then after that, it is just finding opportunities to hit them with both of your shotgun barrels at the same time, which will stagger them if you are able to land both at the same time. Using your shoulders on cooldown should be the go-to at this point as well, giving a little bit more pressure to Sula and then kind of timing your shotgun blasts with when they dodge the missile. And don't worry about using up all your repair kits. Again, the amount of damage you take doesn't really factor in and there is a resupply up ahead and resupplies also do not matter. Eventually with some persistence, Sula will go down and you will move on to the final section of the mission, Baltius. If you immediately assault boost in and then dodge right, right as the missiles are about to hit you, you can get directly up close to him and then I recommend using the assault armor to take about half of his shield off. If you then double pump the shotguns into him, he will almost be completely shieldless right off the go. All you have to do is close the gap one more time and get one more shotgun blast off. At this point, just stay out on top of him, keep the pressure going, and keep the shotgun blasts flying, and you'll keep him in almost a perpetual state of stagger up until phase two. Once the pulse shield starts glowing again, back off so that you don't get hit like I did, and then get ready for the spicy fire. 
if you're good enough at dodging in this game you can dodge around the spicy fire but i would highly recommend backing off until he is done with this attack and then going in with the shotgun blast it takes about three to four cycles of shotgun blast on top of missiles to be able to break his pulse shield and then it is more of the same as long as you stay on top of him and keep unloading the barrels and your artillery on cooldown you should not have too much of an issue finishing this fight out extremely quickly and with that the first chapter is completely s ranked if you found this video helpful don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel we will be doing more armored core content in the near future so be prepared for that but until next time tenno crew thank you much love be safe and bye bye